Hello everybody, my name is Tanisha and I am here with Plaid to welcome you to our new product showcase. Every year we do these videos to show you what's new at Plaid. So today we're going to talk about Folk Art Dots. Folk Art Dots is an acrylic paint used for dotting like as in a mandala. So it's a wonderful paint in a specialized bottle that has a, a writer's tip on it and it creates these perfect little dots with a peak that then spreads out into a nice perfect circle. So you can do this on many different types of materials, including our specialized surfaces that have a mandala pattern on it and you just fill in the dots, which is a really fun project to do, uh, especially if you're maybe a parent or you just need a little bit of relaxation, a minute with your glass of wine, what have you, to fill in those little dots. It's sort of like coloring in a coloring page. It's wonderful. Um, so Folk Art Dots, again, is new this year. We're really excited about it. It has 20 colors, which is a huge range. Um, these colors can be blended or used alone. And again, it's, made, it's an acrylic paint. It's non-toxic, made in the USA, and it's a, a, a bit of a creamy consistency. So you can do it uh, to decorate glass, ceramic, wood, metal, terracotta. You can use it on a ton of surfaces. It's indoor, outdoor, meaning that you can use these on something like a stepping stone outside. Um, they will not get uh, you know, damaged by the weather. It's a really great product. It's even dishwasher safe. As long as you put it in your top rack, it's dishwasher safe. So you can imagine there are thousands of projects that you can do with this uh, mandala folk art dots paint. It's really, really great. So I'm going to uh, just mention that we're going to do a giveaway during this live. So if you would comment below, comment anything you want, comment below, you will be entered into a giveaway and we will send out a gift after our live. So with that said, I am going to give it over to Emily. She's going to be crafting for us today and she's going to show you how to use this paint, what it looks like and show us all the colors. Thank you so much, Tanisha. Hi, everybody. My name's Emily Schmidt, and I'm a content creator here in the Plaid studio. And today, I'm so excited to be sharing with you the brand new Folk Art Dots line. As you can see here, there's so many different awesome projects and surfaces that you can do this on. Tanisha was talking about multi-surface that you can do it on terracotta. You can do it on wood. You can do it on these cute little mushroom sculptures. You can do it on rocks. You can do it on ceramic and glass. I just love the vast amount of possibilities that you can do with this full line of folk art dots. And I'm really excited that we get to go over all the different colors that come in this folk art dots line. So I'm going to go ahead and take it to the overhead and I can show you all the different colors that this line comes in. First, we're going to have this beautiful white, and this is going to be Whisper White. Whisper White is so great for any of the mandala crafts that you're going to be making. White is such a staple color, and it really makes anything bold and bright that you're going to do. Our next color is going to be this creamy, let's see, this creamy caramel color. It's going to be Accent Stone. So when you're going and looking at this, you can get it at platonline.com. You're gonna be looking for Accent Stone. And this is gonna be a really fun creamy, it's um, very tan, a pale tan color. It's gonna be really fun to add some of those neutral colors there. Our next color is gonna be this beautiful pastel pink. This pastel pink is called Pink Nectar. So this is gonna be really fun if you wanna make some like floral designs or anything that's gonna be that bright pink uh, color. Love that within the folk art dots. The next color is going to be a bit of a darker pink. So this is called Paradise Pink. And Paradise Pink is gonna be great for the really richness that in the pink tones that you would wanna to add to your mandala art. Going on, we're gonna to get to this coral color. It's going to be called, right here, Mesa Sunrise. So this is really fun. I love this if you're wanting to pair it with something that is kind of aquatic theme. I feel like this is a really fun color that you can do that with. Or again, if you have some floral mandala designs that you would like to be able to create. Next, we're gonna have this beautiful red ribbon. The red ribbon is again going to be one of those really fun 
um, primary colors that are within the folk art dots line. I love this. It's going to show up in a lot of the different mandala examples that we have here today. So yeah, this is really great. Moving on, we have orange flame. This is going to be a little bit of more of the um, bolder orange than to the coral orange that I was showing you earlier. Really love this as one of those colors. And when you're going to look on Plaid Online, it's going to be called Orange Flame. Moving on, we're going to go into some of our yellows. This yellow is called Sunset. Very bright, very fun. I love this for like a sun mandala. This would be really great for that. Next one, we're going to have a bit of a paler. This is called Summer Sun. So as you can see here, it's going to be a little bit um, paler than the last orange that we, or excuse me, yellow that we had, but it's still really great. Would love to be able to see the two of those together. Now we're going to transition into some of the greens and teals. This one right here is called Grassy Meadow. This is so fun. I love that. Very, very bright, very green, reminds me of summer. Perfect for any of your mandala creations. So Next. While, while you're oh, showing, Emily, sure. I, just, I just want to um, talk to someone who commented. They said they don't see this set on our website. So I just want to let you know that uh, we do have kits. They're six-piece kits. But what Emily is showing us right now is what's considered our open stock. So those are individual bottles of the folk art dots. So if you go to uh, right now, you can go to pladonline.com slash new and under folk art, you'll see dots as well as our other folk art products. So you can go ahead and, and check those out there. Um, you should be able to see them on our main website as well. but but our uh, slash new page has all that. So just go ahead and check again. Yeah, thanks so much for uh, talking about that, Tanisha. I was gonna get to the kit soon. But yeah, these are gonna be all of the open stock colors that we have in the Folk Art Dots line. And uh, I was gonna show the kit of the six, which is right here. And that's going to be really fun. If, if you're a little bit overwhelmed by the variety of colors, it's really perfect for the bright, bold colors that you can see here. I'll go ahead and show you again. So this is going to be the set of six. We can talk about the different colors that come in this one. So this one, it comes with that grassy meadow that we were talking about. So that's gonna come in the six piece kit. Six piece kit. And then we have the Whisper White. Again, this is just a really staple color to be able to have in your collection. We also have a brilliant blue in the six piece kit. We have that yellow, which is gonna be Summer Sun. We have this babbling brook. It's a really pretty teal color. And then we're going to have the red ribbon. So this is gonna be a really great option for anybody that is interested in getting into dots and doesn't really know what colors they wanna get. And um, yeah, that's really awesome. So the rest of the other ones that we have are this babbling brook. Here we go. This comes in the six piece kit, but you can also get it as a standalone. So that's a really fun color. And we just have a few more. So this one is going to be Silky Peacock. Love that. Peacocks are so fun. And I think peacock designs would be really great for the mandala art. That's a great name. Yeah, <laughs> this one, this one's even better. It's Heavenly Blue. Ooh. Love that. Super fun. We've got five more colors in the line. Brilliant Blue, this is again another color that comes in the six piece kit. Really fun. We have a darker blue here. This is gonna be called Shibori. <laughs> so this is really great. Very rich, very, very deep blue. Shibori as a craft is very hot right now. Yes, yes, very much. So you I can, can see where the, the color. <laughs> uh huh, the name influence would come from. This is really fun. This is called Hushed Violet. Very, very pretty. Would love to see that with some of the other pinks and yellows in the set. Oops, excuse me. Then we have a, um, another purple. This is going to be called Pleasant Purple. And then our last one, if you can't guess what it is, what are we missing? <laughs> a black. So this is called Black Magic. 
So there you go, that's going to be the 20 different colors within the line and then the six piece kit. So I really love this. I think you can do so much with all of these beautiful colors within the line. And again, if you want to try that six piece kit, it's going to come like this. You can get this on platonline.com and it comes with a lot of the bright colors, the bold colors. And um, I guess it would be a lot of the primary colors are in this along with a white. And I think you can do so much with it. So I have an example right here. This was created with the six piece kit. And I'm gonna go overhead again so you can kind of see what it looks like. This is really fun. You can see all of the different blues, the whites, yellows. We've got that teal color in it. Um, I think it's just so fun. I can try to get a close up of it. Let me see, there we go. Look at how just the smoothness of the um, circles they're perfect they fall within that and this is one of the surfaces that Tanisha was talking about really love this because um, you can create so many different styles with this kit as well as with this surface so I think it's fun to be able to experiment and try different things so this is going to be one of the surfaces I'll go ahead and grab the two that you can see. So this is, oops, this is gonna be what the surface looks like without anything. So as you can see here, you can create any different pattern that you would like to be able to make. And then for this one, as you can see, it really just, the possibilities are endless. This was created with a six piece kit that you see here, but there's 20 colors that you can create if you wanna go with a pastel, or if you wanna go with a neutral. I love this idea. We also have a secondary surface, which looks like this. It's a little bit different, and Tanisha has an example of what this looks like over at her. And I believe you're talking about this one here. Yep. Let me pull it over for you. So you can see, again, this one's done in a more primary um, uh, color way, but limited. So it's, it, I, I'm not sure if this one was in the kit, because this one looks like it has a bit of a turquoise to it. But I also have one below here that I'll pull out that was done differently. So I have here that was more a red and teal version, which I think came out really pretty, sort of a, a classic mandala coloring. And then another one here that's just in our blues and greens with a little bit of white. So you can see that even though the pattern remains the same between the two, you can really get a different effect uh, depending on the color you choose, as well as how much you layer it. So you can take these, these larger dots and put in a smaller dot to make it look like it has even more depth. Um, so you can play around with that a lot, which I think is really, really fun. So Tanisha, those are all really great examples of how you can use the surfaces that are available on platonline.com. But maybe you wanna do something else with the folk art dots line. You could create on like a cigar box. Maybe you wanna put your jewelry in this. This is a really fun example of something that you can do. It's a wood surface, so it's a multi-surface paint. I think it's really great to be able to use it on something like this. You can also do um, terracotta pots like we were saying earlier. You can put your plants in here, maybe some of your succulents. I think that this is a really fun idea. Tanisha was talking about how you can layer the paint on different dots. And if you wanna go overhead, you can kind of see how that, let me get a little bit close up here. So you can see like how there's so many different layers that are happening within this mandala look on the terracotta pot. I just love how it comes together. And again, this color palette is a really cool. I love the little um, pastel blue that's in there with the green and the teal. I think that that's really fun. Speaking of another um, example of what you can do on multi-surface, this is going to be a ceramic mug. And so like Tanisha was saying, you can put this in the dishwasher top rack and it's going to be okay. Remember that when you're doing anything that's going to be um, around uh, your mouth, you want to leave at least an inch to an inch and a half from the rim. But other than that, this is a really, really fun design. So I think that I would like to be able to show everybody how you can craft with the Folk Art Dots line. So would you like to go ahead and get started on that? Let's do that for sure. Okay, so um, I have an example here. 
of one of these surfaces. So let's just get into it. So we're gonna go ahead and do something with this surface. I'm gonna move this kit out of the way so we have a little bit more room. So as you can see here, we can do anything with this. So I love the idea of doing something with um, the pastels. So this is going to be um, how the bottle looks when you get it. So I know we've looked at all the colors, but let's talk about um, just how fun the bottle actually is and the usability of working with this. So as you can see here, Tanisha was talking about how it has this uh, pointed tip. So if you take the top off, this is going to be what it looks like. Let's see if I can get close up. So as you can see, oh, that's that's a great shot right there. So um, the paint is gonna flow through here and then it's gonna create a perfect circle. So this paint peaks, but it also levels out to where it does a really flat circle. So you don't have to worry about it. And then when you go down here, so we're gonna start, I think starting in the center is always a really great idea. And when you hold it, I like to hold it down here where it's like between the D and the S. I think that that gives me a really good grip. And then all you have to do, you can see it come out. You do around the circle, just like this. And these surfaces are great because they um, kind of make it easy. You don't have to think about it. And then as you can see here, let's get it up close. Look at how pretty that is. Like, I don't know if I can show how it lays, but it's not spreading out. You don't have to worry about it getting outside the lines. And then you just kind of go around and say, okay, well, I want to do this row in pink. And then you're just going to keep working your way around on the surface. And while you're crafting, I just want to remind everybody that we are doing a giveaway. So if you just joined us, um, go ahead and leave a comment, any comment in the, uh, below in the live, and you will be entered into the giveaway. Yeah, definitely. This is the perfect opportunity that if you want to try dots, this is the way to do it. Get yourself interested in um, getting a comment in. And then we're gonna go through with this Whisper White now. So we're going to go in and add another color to this surface. So I'm gonna take it off, I'm gonna squeeze, and let's do some smaller dots. So again, really, really easy. I don't even have to think about the placement because these surfaces have it right done for you. As you can see, look how quickly it was to create this additional row. So I'm gonna bring that up a little bit closer for you. And we've got a great comment from Jennifer, and she says, what a neat product, always wanted to try mandalas, but was very intimidated. This makes it look so much easier. And I can confirm it is much easier when you have those dots uh, drawn out for you. But then once you get good at it, um, which we have a few people here in the studio who are really good at it, um, you don't need those dots anymore. So these, uh, these surfaces that have the pattern printed on it are really a great way to start. Yes, they're very user friendly and beginner friendly. I think that it's just great if you want to sit down, like you were saying earlier, grab yourself a glass of wine, unwind, and you know, just have a bit of peace and tranquility at the end of your day. I think that this is such a, th this is a staple. You need to get this because that experience is something that this summer you deserve. Agreed. So as you can see here, I'm just going through and adding dots to all of this. And then you would just repeat the process. So you can, you can see here, I love this pastel color palette. I think that it's so fun to be able to go in and add all of the different colors here. And you can just envision like how this is going to blossom and become something really, really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to showing you how you can create a dots on top of dots. So here's another example. Let me move some of these out of the way. This is really fun because it shows you that you can not only create dots, but you can also use this to create lettering. So here it says the word love. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit closer so you can see all the different 
colored dots that are on this one mandala. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you just how simple it is to create another layer of dots on your dried dot. So you would wanna go ahead and do your first layer just like we were doing on the other example and on, on the other surface. And then you wanna go in and add another layer once it's fully dry. So we'll take this, we'll go ahead and use the pink again. This one again is called Pink Nectar. And I think it's so fun. And then I'm gonna go on these dots right here. So as you can see here, I'm just going around in a circular motion. And then I'm just adding another layer. It's that simple. And we do have a question. Sure. Um, if you mess up, can you wipe it away? Sure, so I recommend having baby wipes. And all you have to do is just take a baby wipe or you can um, moisten a Q-tip and then you can go through and then you can just wipe it off. So then you can be able to take that and you won't have to worry about it. It's fine. Like I think it's okay. And even if you wiped it and it got on like maybe the black, you can touch up the black just fine. So as you can see here, it just flows so nicely into the pattern. And I added these dots on top of the uh, darker pink. So now let's talk about how to do the lettering. So making love. So I'm gonna pull this out of the way and then I'm going to get another, this is just another surface that you can use. This is a chalk surface. And I'm gonna show you how that you can um, create letters with this and it's so simple. So let's go with a pastel purple. So this is called Hushed Violet. So again, you can kind of see what this beautiful color is. Love that. Again, it's going to have that writer tip. I'm gonna be squeezing between the S and the D. And then I'm just gonna go kind of free flow this. If you want to, you could put chalk on here and you know write out how you want to be able to prepare where your line is going. But I'm just gonna freestyle and we're just gonna write love. So I'm gonna squeeze. So just like that. And then if you wanna go in and like fill this in. Just like that. So then it says love. And say you wanna do a heart. So I'll do a heart up here. And this is also really great for filling in. So say you wanted to have the same look, but have the whole heart filled in, that's what you can do as well. So then I'm gonna add some little dots beside it. Just getting a little bit smaller. Just like that. So as you can see, this is what it looks like, love. And then if you wanted to, take this out of the way. And I have to say that that was faster than doing it with a paintbrush. It was very that fast. That was very fast. It was very, very fast. And then say we want to add some, maybe some really fun squiggles on this. So let's add a line. And then we can do another line. And then we want to do maybe like a tribal squiggle and then add a dot we can decorate just like this the options are endless and then if you wanted to do maybe we'll do a flower down here and we can fill it in and then when it's dry, you can go in and you can add the center. So just like that. If you wanted to do even smaller flowers down here, add a few more. And again, just to remind everybody, these are uh, these paints are non-toxic, made here in the USA. They are indoor/outdoor, which is amazing. Um, and they can go in the dishwasher top rack. So the, the project ideas are endless. Yes, so again, here's an example of what you can do with a mug. And then I can do an example of a medalla like this. 
So I'm going to take this away, grab another one. This one's a little bit larger, and then I think we could go for a darker color palette. So maybe let's work on some of our blues. So we can grab, let's see, this one's Shibori, and we've got Heavenly Blue, and then we can pull in Babbling Brook. So we'll try some of these. So we'll go in and I recommend working from the center out. So then you just... And while you're starting that, I do have a few questions. One, um, it says, can it be used on rocks? And I will go ahead and answer that. Yes, it can. Um, a lot of our mandala projects are on stones. Um, we here in the studio have a big bag of stones that we got at somewhere, you know, like Home Depot, something like that, where they're nice and smooth. Um, and you can put a mandala or whatever else on it. And then it's indoor, outdoor, so you can use them outside in your plants, in your garden, so on and so forth. And then I had another question. Um, someone asked, do you have to seal it for outdoor use? Um, you do not. These are indoor, outdoor paints. You could put a sealer on top of it. Um, let's say your uh, material that you were painting on is very porous or something like that. You could use, let's say, an outdoor Mod Podge on that to seal it, but you do not have to. Uh, let's see, how much is the cost? I think I saw $3.99 per bottle on the on platonline.com slash new. I could be a few cents off on that, but I think that was about right. Um, and then Connie asks, do they need to be baked in the oven? They do not. They do not need to be cured in any way. They are good uh, once they dry. You can move on and use them in the way that you would like. Um, uh, and again, uh, someone named Robbie says, on mugs, do you have to seal it? No, you do not. Um, again, they are indoor, outdoor, and dishwasher safe, so you are good to go once it dries. Um, I would let it cure for longer than the actual drying time. Uh, drying time is about one hour. You would want to let it cure for probably a couple days before you put it in the dishwasher. Um, and let's see. I don't know. I don't think I have any other questions, so we'll go back to letting Emily talk about the crafting. All right, so as you can see here, I was just working on this mandala here. I'm creating different sized dots, and I'm going in and just adding it all the way around. And then you can just have a lot of fun with this. You know, let this be an example of, you know, trying out different stuff going in and creating a really fun template with your creation. Another thing that you can do is this is a, oh, we were talking about rocks. So here's a rock. This was just painted black with some acrylic paint. And then if you wanna go in, let's say, um, smile. So, you know, rocks, this is really fun because people, what they'll do is they'll paint on rocks and then they'll leave them places for people so that if you want to be able to make sure that you have a paint that's going to be able to work really really well on painting on rocks this is a great example so I'm going to go through and then I'm going to write smile on here oops it's really good to have um, a piece of paper handy or um, excuse me a piece of let me show you so if you want to be able to clean your nozzles off, you can just have some paper towels off to the side to be able to help because you want um, you don't want to have a lot of buildup on this part. So in here, we're going to have smile. My kids love finding those little stones places. And if you want to go in and just touch up, you can. So then it says smile on it. So I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer. So smile, and then let's add some uh, dots around the smile. And then if anybody has some ideas of things that they would like to be able to use the folk art dots on, please let us know. I think it would be really fun to hear We've had some questions about stepping stones. Um, someone asked, how would you put it on stepping stones? 
Um, you could put it on stepping stones, a, a raw stepping stone. I guess it depends on if it's a very porous concrete or something that's more polished. Um, if you wanted to put it on something that's more polished, you could uh, start by sealing the stone and then put your paint on top of it. Um, there are a few different ways, uh, and we actually may have some instructions on platonline.com if you want to look that up. Yes, platonline.com has awesome resources for anybody interested in learning more about how to use not only folk art dots, but any of the other awesome paint products and surfaces and tools. There's just so many to choose from and it's a huge um, resource for people that are wanting to learn new arts and crafts skills. So if you haven't been there yet, definitely recommend checking it out. And someone did ask what size bottles these are and I checked and it is two fluid ounces. So you can see it's going to be right here, two fluid ounces. You are correct. All right, so as you can see here, you could just create this pattern all along the rock. And I think it's just really fun. If I found this rock, I would most definitely smile. So yeah, that was really fun. Is there anything else that you want me to craft, Tanisha? Or do you think we've covered some of the basics? I think we've probably covered the basics. Um, our very last comment that I'm seeing is someone asked, is it food safe? Um, you know, it is non-toxic. I, if you're, if you're doing something like a mug or a glass, a wedding glass, something like that, I would just keep it one inch below the, the rim so that when you drink out of it or eat out of it, um, you don't want it inside of your mouth. It is non-toxic, nothing would happen. Um, but it's just sort of a, a good rule of thumb to keep it one inch below where your mouth will touch. Right. I think it's just really important to remember that if you're ever doing it on glassware or like you said, a mug, or if you're going to be putting it around the rim of a plate, I think it's just really important to remember that you could do it on the back side of a glass plate and you can still see it on the other side, or you can always put like a paper doily down to where it's not actually having immediate contact with whatever food that you're doing. So it's just really important to just always remember that you want to be safe first and um, always, you know, allowing just that one itch and nobody would ever know that you weren't trying <laughs> to get, you know, to leave that space on a mug and it still looks super nice. Yeah, so thank you so much, Emily, for crafting for us and showing us all about the product. Um, I hope you guys all learned a bunch of stuff and you're excited about Folk Art Dots. I know we are here at Plaid. It's a really fun product and those surfaces, I am telling you, you're going to want to start with the surfaces, the pre-printed, uh, it really, really helps and it's really fun to do. So again, you get one last chance. If you want to join the giveaway, comment down below and you will be entered automatically into the giveaway. And uh, we will announce that later on today, I believe. Um, so again, this was all about Folk Art Darts, Dots. Excuse me. You can join us again every day this week at 10, nope, 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And we will be showing you all of our new products for this year. We are really excited and we hope you are too. So thank you very, very much for joining us today and I will see you next time.